This time we'll uh, have the uh, mayor, Mark Lisco, be sworn in. He's uh, going to be sworn in this evening by the Honorable Judge J. Craig Cox. Thank you. 
prepared to take the oath by putting your plate, placing the left hand on the glass, raising your right hand, and turning after me. I, Mark Lewisco, I, Mark Lewisco, you solemnly swear, you solemnly swear, that I will support, obey, and defend, that I will support, obey, and defend the Constitution of the United States, the Constitution of the United States, and the Constitution of this Commonwealth, and the Constitution of this Commonwealth, that I will discharge the duties of my office, and that I will discharge the duties of my office as mayor, as, as mayor, an employee of the city of Newcastle, Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, as employee of the city of Newcastle, Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, with fidelity, with fidelity. Thank you, Judge Fox. Uh, my uh, wife was supposed to be up here for this, but I'm going to ask you to come up here now. <laughs> okay. I am so appreciative that everyone is here today. My relatives. journey for me. And um, I'm an Italian, full blood. So I get a little emotional. You're going to have to bear with me. You know, uh, a wise man once said that uh, 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 if a man gets emotional, it's not because he's weak, it's because he cares. And I certainly do care about this community. And I was always asked, uh, former Mayor Richard Christer asked me if I'm going to make a speech. Richard, I've been waiting nine years to make this. <laughs> better believe I'm making this. Speech. <laughs> but I won't be here long. I'll be here only about seven, eight minutes. And I have to say that I am extremely flattered and honored to be the mayor of the city that we all love. And I certainly know the responsibility that goes along with this position. And I also know that the holder of this position is not important. But the office is vitally important for what we want to achieve here. And I have to say that I probably hear more uh, than most people hear on what everyone hears about our community. That Newcastle is dead. <clears throat> that we're never going to fill these empty buildings. That we are unprepared for the employment of the 21st century. And I also hear about how bad our attitude is in the culture, and that will never change the culture of losing that permeates Newcastle. Now, you can believe that if you want, but those are all urban myths. They're all urban myths, every one of them. And here's why. Growing up and living in Newcastle, you gain an undeniable characteristics, a characteristic that all of us have. And that is, no matter what the odds, we just don't quit. We don't quit here in Newcastle. We don't quit. And I'll tell you this, it's in our genetic code. It really is. And so I have seen that attribute, and I have seen what people can achieve when they have that attribute that we all have here in Newcastle. Here, among my esteemed colleagues, who I'm so looking forward to working with, 
I watched how every one of these guys pursued their seats. Every one. Um, going out in horrible weather in February, getting the, 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 the signatures that you need just to get on the ballot. That means you've earned these positions. You've actually went door to door in all kinds of weather, and anybody who's, who hasn't done that, I can tell you how <coughs> grueling that is. You don't know if somebody's going to throw you off the porch, right? Or embrace you. <laughs> Just the way it is. Um, and then going to function. Making speeches that you've all made, and I've heard. Half the time, people aren't even listening to what you're saying. But yet, you've done it. And taking the criticisms that come along with these positions that you all have done. My wife and I, four years ago, knocked on 4,000 doors. You might think that's an exaggeration. It isn't. And you know who dogged us every step of the way, knocked on as many doors? My opponent, Mr. Fry. He did. I watched him the whole time as he dogged me every single step. <laughs> he had swore in the whole time. <laughs> I never did that. <laughs> but the point is that none of these guys quit on their desire. They couldn't quit on their desire because they're from Newcastle. It's in their genetic code. And their desire is simply one reason, no matter what you think, it's to make Newcastle better. And that's why I can't wait to work with these guys. And we all know, and these guys all know, that this is not a political career. No one is going from here to the U.S. Senate. This is community service. That's what this is. And I can tell you this. I'm inspired by the determination that these guys have demonstrated in this last couple of years that I've watched them, and I'm inspired by what we can achieve. I'm proud to say that I grew up in Newcastle in the 60s and 70s on the south side and the east side of Newcastle in the home of a World War II veteran and a crazy Italian immigrant mother. <laughs> Anthony Joseph Alisco and Carmela Maria Caiaza Alisco. My father, many of you knew, stayed in the Army and the National Guard for 37 years. And he worked at the American Dynamite, making dynamite for $52 a week. That place blew up three times. And each time, we waited at the kitchen table to see if he would walk through that door. He never quit on his patriotic duty to, to his country, and he never quit on his responsibility to raise a family. He couldn't, because he was from Newcastle. It was in his genetic code. He couldn't quit. And my mother was tougher than my father. She sent my brother and me out in the streets when we were only eight years old, like all the other kids on this side. Gary Miller sitting back there. He was one of the guys out in the street, seven years old, with us. And we were out all day. She sent us with this message. Go out there and make friends. You know why? Because she understood the importance of, un, uh, of unsupervised, uh, without, without supervis supervision with adults. She understood that it was up to us to make friends, to organize games, and to learn how to communicate with the people in the neighborhood. She knew how important that was. And she would say this, as all the mothers did in those days. No matter what you're doing, if you're playing a sport, if you're playing a game, or if I'm giving you a chore, you don't quit till the job's done. You don't quit. You see, you learn this from our city. All of us have learned that from the city. We've learned it from the Newcastle School District, and we've learned it from our parents. We don't quit. And the secret that leads you to achieve your goals is the strength of your tenacity. We all know that. And that upbringing inspires me to this day. I watched my wife here, Janet Foley Lisco, before me, as a single mom raise a young boy. Like all single moms, we all know this. Many of you may be a part of this. Money is always tight. Nevertheless, her son had a passion for baseball. He loved baseball. And when it was time to go play, and any of you who have any children, boys or girls, you know what the cost of travel ball is. 
So she made sure that he was playing travel ball. When he asked, how are you going to pay for this? She said, you don't worry about that. I'll take care of that. I'm not quitting on your passion. Whenever they went and got uniforms, went to Cooperstown for tournaments, went to Maryland, Ripken for tournaments. When he asked, how much does it cost? She said, you don't worry about that. I worry about that. You go chase what you want to chase. You chase your dream. When he went to high school, since my wife valued education, she made sure he took all accelerated program classes. Every one of them. She made sure he took them. And when he asked her, how are you paying for this? She said, you don't worry about that. I'll find a way to pay for it. That's what you're doing. You see, she never quit on her desire and her dream for her son. She couldn't. She's from Newcastle. It's in her genetic code. And you know what? That young man today, Gino, he's sitting right there. He's a doctor of pharmacy. How are we not inspired by that? How are we not inspired by what, by what we can achieve? And I watched my brother, Dennis, a number of years ago. And I agitate my brother more than anything. But, <laughs> but this... He took on a case on an 11-year-old boy that was accused of double homicide. There's two people who believed that boy was innocent, my brother and the boy's father. That's it. No one else did it. I watched as my brother fought that case for 10 years with no pay, despite numerous setbacks, until finally he had the opportunity to argue that case in front of the PA, Pennsylvania Supreme Court, who then exonerated that young man. You see, Dennis couldn't quit. He couldn't. He believed in what he was doing. He couldn't quit. He's from Newcastle. It's in his genetic code. Aren't we all inspired by what we can achieve? I am. I'm inspired by that. Think about it. Go, about, go through our history here for one second. Think about the dreams of these guys. Think about the, the achievements of our native sons and daughters. Chuck Tanner had a dream. He's from our area. He won a World Series. Southside Dave native, Dr. Slayman, his efforts to cure cancer, he had a dream. He achieved what he believed. Mahoney Towns, Mark Mangino, he had a dream and believed, and he won an Orange Bowl, and his team went to uh, number two ranking in the nation. How about Matt DeSelva? He had a dream. He's from our area. He pitched for the New York Yankees. This is what we can achieve if we believe. Nick Rapone coached for years and years, and finally, two years ago, he won the Super Bowl. He believed. He believed with what he could do. Maureen Shafulo, I remember, I taught with her. She quit teaching, joined the Army. She became a U.S. general. How are we not inspired by what we can do when we hear those stories? And today, we see every single day the achievements of Geno Stone and the achievements of Malik Hooker. These guys believe of what they can achieve. And in the past, in the past, the achievements of Daryl Dess, when he played 12 years in the NFL, and Bobby's brother, Bobby Rizan, uh, Rick Rosanna, who played in the Super Bowl, because they believed. You see, the strength of their tenacity <clears throat> enabled them to achieve their goals. Those people never quit. They never quit. It's in their genetic code. They couldn't quit. Therefore, I say to my colleagues, the greatest danger is not that our aim is too high and we miss it, it's that it's too low when we reach it. I say we have to refuse. We have to aim high. And we have to refuse to choose small thinking and low expectations. And above all, we cannot be seduced by the absurd, absurd idea that danger is having too much belief. High expectations, colleagues, will lead us to our goal. So the question that is posed for us and, and our burden is this. If not us, who? And if not now, when? So in conclusion, to those of you 
who have asked me so many times, I've been asked this question, are you aware of the challenges presented to you as mayor of Newcastle? Do you really understand what you're getting into? My answer to those questions of, am I aware? Do I understand? Let me tell you something. I was born for this moment. I was born for this time. I was born for this. I'm letting you know that now. I was born for this. I'm from Newcastle. I don't quit. It's in my genetic code. And you damn well better believe I'm not going to quit on what I believe we can achieve for this city. Thank you. Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of this Commonwealth. And the Constitution of this Commonwealth. And that I will discharge. And that I will discharge. The duties of my office. The duties of my office. As a council member. As a council member. An employee of the City of Newcastle. An employee of the City of Newcastle. Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. With fidelity. With fidelity. Congratulations. <laughs> Our next is our next person to be sworn in for counsel is Mr. Robert Rosano, who will be sworn in by Judge Dominic Mara. Solemnly swear that I will support, that I will support, obey and defend, obey and defend the Constitution of the United States, the Constitution of the United States, and the Constitution of this Commonwealth, and the Constitution of this Commonwealth, and that I will discharge, and I will discharge the duties of my office, the duties of my office as a council member, as a council member, an employee of the City of Newcastle, an employee of the City of Newcastle, Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. With fidelity. With fidelity. Thanks, Judge. next person to be sworn in will be Gary Rogers, sworn in by Judge Craig Cox. Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of this Commonwealth and the Constitution of this Commonwealth. 
that I will discharge the duties of my office. I will discharge the duties of my office. As a council member. As a council member. An employee of the city of Newcastle. An employee of the city of Newcastle. Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. With fidelity. With fidelity. of having a reorganization of city council. Mr. Carlo, we call the roll. Nomination of Eric Ritter. Do I have a second? I'll second. Don't need one. Uh, okay, we don't need a second. <laughs> are there any other do not are there any other nominations? Hearing none. Let's have a call the roll for approval of Eric Ritter as deputy mayor. Mr. Regano? Yes. Mr. Ward? Yes. Mr. Ritter? Yes. Mr. Cameron? Yes. Mr. Rogers? Yes. Mayor Lister? Yes. <clears throat> Eric Ritter is now elected as second man. <laughs> Any motion to adjourn our meeting? Motion, second. Motion by Mr. Ritter, second by Mr. Ward. Call the roll. Mr. Regano? Yes. Mr. Ward? Yes. Mr. Ritter? Yes. Mr. Rogers? Yes. Mr. Cameron? Yes. Mr. Cameron? Yes. Mr. Ritter? Yes. Thank you all for coming. This adjourns our meeting. Newcastle's moving ahead. <laughs>